Hey everyone, welcome to part three of Widget Basics. Today we're gonna to be going over what modular widgets are and essentially the understanding of how to utilize them to not only save yourself time, to also make it really easy to make adjustments in the future. So what exactly are modular widgets or uh, nested widgets within other widgets? Things like that, you may hear similar terms. What it is, is essentially a widget to where you basically create a template. And I could have sworn I just saw a fur go by me. Anyways, uh, so within that template, you're able to set uh, variables, images, things like that, so that you can populate it multiple times um, with different variety of information so that you can just use the same one instead of just constantly creating new ones. It saves yourself a lot of time in the future. Things are also really helpful for like inventories, hero selection, uh, really the, the line could go on forever with what you can use it with. So anyways, let's get into it. So I did create a widget to where there is some information already populated so that we can go over it and discuss. It is using League of Legends character images. I am not associated with League of Legends or Riot games at all. I am simply using this as demonstration purposes. These are not my images. Don't sue me. All right, so let's get into it. With these two widgets right now, we have two icons that are also displaying the name. What I'm gonna be going over is how we can easily set this up so that we can make it so much simpler to populate this information. And then in the future, whenever we add in a new character, we can then populate new information. I'm also gonna show you uh, a way to where you can populate these throughout a data table. That's a bit more advanced. So we're gonna start first and then we're gonna go into the slightly more advanced information uh, and then we'll take it from there. So as of right now, let's kind of like dive into what's within this widget right now. Right now we have an RE box and an Atrox box. Within these two widgets, we simply have an image and text. It's super simple. However, right now, if we wanted to create a third character, we would need to essentially copy this entire thing, paste it within here, and then let's do like, let's see, that's at negative 05. We're gonna do this and we'll do negative 1.5. Now let's do negative two. Okay, so that puts it out the other end. However, now that we've copied it, we now have to then manually change this information. So if we go into here, we'll then select a collie, we'll set the image size to 300, and we also have to change the text. So within that, we now have a third character. But then if we do the fourth or the fifth or the sixth, it starts getting very repetitive. It's a lot of time consuming to do. But also, what if we wanted to change the text? So for example, this text is white. What if we wanted to make it red? Oh, sorry, I'm on tint on accident. We want color opacity to red. There we go. But now that we've changed the text to red, we now have to then go and make edits to all the other ones. So then we would have to go into Ari, we'd have to do the exact same thing, and then we'd go to Akali and then do it again. So as you can tell, it's very time consuming, especially if you had as many people as like video games have, like League of Legends, where they have like 160 plus or whatever it may be, or for any type of RPG that may have like 15 different characters, things like that. So there can be a lot of characters. It would be super time consuming. Obviously, you don't want to do that. So the way that we can do this is by creating a modular widget. It is a widget to where we can essentially have an image and a text, and then we can just set the changes based upon what we want to enter. So for example, we could leave the font, or not the font, um, the color opacity within the widget, and then all we need to do is change what the word says, and then we can then go from there, as well as like images. So let's kind of go into it. What we're going to do is create our own widget that's going to be essentially this. It's going to be a box with an image and a text. 
I could copy and paste this into another widget to kind of show you how easy it could be. However, I'm gonna end up creating a new widget. So we're gonna go to widget blueprint. We're gonna use common user widget. I use common UI, however, you could use just regular user interface. This works perfectly fine for all widgets within Unreal. We're gonna do UI. We're just gonna call this modular widget. So I also have it automatically set up to where I have an overlay. You don't have to do that. Um, I'm gonna delete that in that case for right now. So what we could do is we can take this entire box and then we copy and then we could paste it. So in a sense, we would then have it populate automatically in. I'm not gonna do that automatically. We're gonna then do it by scratch so you can kind of see what the process is like. Obviously, if you've created this widget, you may have already known what the process is like anyways. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a vertical box, uh, if I can spell vertical, and then we're gonna drag it in here. Within this vertical box, we're then gonna want to add in our image. And then we're also gonna grab a text within here. Bang. Within this image, we're gonna go ahead and change this to 300 by 300. And then this text, let's change it to, let's see what we have over here. We have a uh, 45 and it's bold. So let's just make sure it's 45. And let's go ahead and do, do, do. We're gonna center this. And then we have that set to fill, which is great. We're also going to wrap this with a size box. Uh, oop, I went over replace. And essentially what the size box is gonna do is make sure it never is um, smaller than what I want it to be or bigger than what I want it to be. In this case, I wanna specify how small I will allow it to be because I want it to serve a specific purpose. So we're gonna switch on the minimum desired height and minimum desired width. And we're essentially gonna copy exactly what's shown here. I have a size of 300, which is going to be the width. Uh, so X is width, Y is height, so that's 400. So height 400 and then 300, and let's switch this to desired. So like that, we kind of have a replication of exactly what's shown here. Obviously the text is still white, that's perfectly okay. But now let's get into how we can constantly change this information to make our life easier. So the first thing to do is any type of widget that you wanna make adjustments to, you have to make sure it has is variable turned on. Images and buttons typically have it automatically turned on, but other things such as text, as well as vertical boxes, side boxes, do not get it automatically turned on, so you would have to turn it on. Um, some widgets may not automatically get turned on, some may, things like that. Just if you need it, make sure that this is turned on. So we're gonna go ahead and turn these on. I'm gonna change the names just because I really don't like seeing the numbers. And then now let's get it so that we can always change what image is shown here. So we're gonna go ahead and go into here. We're gonna get this, we're gonna set brush. And what that does is you can change the image. So in this case, it's gonna be called the brush and you can choose what to use. You can choose to either use material, uh, texture, um, soft material, soft texture, things like that. In this case, I'm gonna be using an image, which is going to be used for as a texture, because that's the images that I have imported in. And then in this case, now we would have to then choose what to use. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna promote this to a variable. So if you just right click or left click, depending on if you're left or right handed, uh, I'm left-handed, so it's a bit backwards for me. So I always mess up with those directions. And with that, now we have a texture variable. And what we're gonna do with this is we are going to then make it instance editable, which means that it can get publicly edited, which means that um, people are allowed to change it outside of this widget itself. And then you would then do exposed on spawn, which would then mean when you are spawning this widget, 
you can choose to set this variable. So that would make it available. We're going to leave match size off because we don't want to change the size of the texture. We want to leave it at that 300 by 300 because that's what I want. The images I have are 120 by 120, so it would change it completely. And then next, we want to do the exact same thing for this text block, uh, which we should just call it name instead. Or actually, let's do. Now, let's leave it as text box or just call it text. That's fine. We're going to grab the text and then we're going to do set text. And we're going to choose the one that says set text with the parentheses text. And then we're going to plug it in there and we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the image. We're going to then promote this to a variable. And within this, we're going to just call this name. And that's the reason I didn't want to name the other thing name. <laughs> name the other thing name. Yeah. Anyways, so now we have a way to set the texture and set the name. And then we're going to also make sure that we do the exact same thing, make this instance editable and exposed on spot. So we're going to go ahead and just hit that save button. But now what you should see is. Oh, I only see text here. Did I miss one of the options over here? Oh, there we go. Okay. So to see all the variables, just make sure you're clicking on module widget up here. And then now we would be able to change whatever image we want. So like that, it automatically changes, which is great. It's kind of the same thing as if you went down to this image and then you went over here and then you change that to a collie or whatever the case is. But you'll notice that by doing this, I end up changing the texture size, or which is automatically going to that 120 by 120. That's kind of why we went into here and we made sure we didn't hit that max match size. Okay. And then we can do the same thing for the text. Under name, we could then just type Alistar like that. So then we're able to then easily change this. Now, what we could do is let's make sure that this is by default empty. And then you could also set any other type of empty image if you wanted to leave that. And instead of doing this, what we're going to do is now we're going to grab this modular widget, just type in modular widget, drag it into the canvas panel. Tune, tune, tune. Did I not set the minimum of the size box? Minimum desired, minimum height. I guess I could just do height override right now. And we'll do 400 by 300. There we go. And then hit that size to content. Like that. So if I don't do that, you'll notice it's using whatever size that I entered. And then we do size to content. And then it fits it over here. So we're going to go ahead, center that. We're going to then kind of match what Ari has, which is 1.5. And I think a, let's do a 2.53. There we go. And from here, all we would have to do is then change this to whatever we want. Akshan, like that. Now, that allows us to easily adjust it. So instead of having the Ari and Aatrox, so if I deleted, or actually instead of deleting, I can then go into here, do replace with, oh, it doesn't let me replace it. So let's go ahead and actually just drop this in to here. We're gonna call this module widget two, size the content. We're gonna steal the Aatrox alignment. So I'm holding shift to my uh, right click, which is copying, and then the other mouse click to paste. So, like that, we're gonna go ahead and do here zero, zero. And I think, did I copy? Oh, I copied a Collies. Dur. So, we're gonna go ahead and delete this box, and we're gonna change this to a Collie. Uh, 
All right, so let's just quickly change these two as well. And now that I've changed that, now let's say we want to now change the text. So let's go ahead and go within here, and then go into the text. And let's say that instead of that white color, we then want to make it blue. So by doing that, hit compile, go back into the base, and then now all of them have changed. So now we see that we can adjust every single widget automatically. It saves our life hugely. We can even then go into here and let's say if we want to change this to 200 by 200, hit compile, and then all the images have now shrunk to 200 by 200. Let's go ahead and revert that back to 300 by 300. Hit compile. You do have to hit compile because you're in another widget. If you don't hit compile, for example, let's do 100, 100, you won't see any changes until you hit compile. And then you see that it's changed. So just keep that in mind when you're making edits to make sure to hit the compile button if you don't know that already. Okay, so now what's something else we could do? So this is when we're gonna end up getting into something a bit more advanced. And I say advanced, it's not super advanced, it's just something that is a bit more complicated, which involves the data table. However, right before I jump into that data table, I do want to just finalize kind of the basics here. So for those that have been watching and just understanding what the basics are up until this point, that is how you can utilize a widget that can easily change information. It doesn't strictly have to be text or images. You could have actual widgets to populate. You can have pop-ups, uh, things like that. There is plenty of ways that you could go about making modular widgets. This is strictly a very, very simplified version so that it's just easily understood to come across but it is super helpful. There's also really helpful uh, styles within Common UI plugin that also makes your life easier along the lines of changing buttons and things like that. Highly recommend to look into it. But yeah, that is just kind of the basics of what a modular widget is and how you can really save yourself some time. So let's end up moving into that data table. What I'm gonna show within the data table is essentially just names and images that link up directly. So it's kind of everything that you already see within this modular widget. Uh, so you'll see that we have a texture and a name. It's exactly that. And what we're gonna do is that we are going to then populate these images within a, a vertical box. So let's go ahead and grab a vertical box. We're gonna go ahead and populate over here. We're gonna anchor it to the top so it stays across the top. And then I think we set the height of 400. So let's go ahead and hit that. You could also hit the size to content, which means it will increase on size depending on what the content is. Um, we should be all right because of the size box that we entered in, but. So I'll leave that on right now. We may turn it off. But from here, let's go ahead and now turn this into a variable. So we want this vertical box. So we're gonna just change this name to container. And what we're now going to want to do is we're gonna take our data table to start populating images into this container. So we're gonna go into our graph. We're gonna hit the pre-construct. Let's move it over here. And what we want to do is get data table. And we want the row names. So we're gonna go ahead in here and we're gonna loop. And essentially what this is doing is it's taking all of the row names of the data table. So this is basically just one, two, it just literally counts up to however many characters there are, 167. It's just super simple. 
So the names are also equal to numbers. So technically speaking, I wouldn't even have to use um, the row names if I didn't want to. And what we want to do is then data table. Scroll down. I don't know why it's the one thing that's always at the bottom. So whenever you search data table, you have a list of everything here. And then you have get data table row at the very bottom. It's super annoying, uh, but hmm, that is how you can find it. And from here, we want to use the exact same data table and plug in here. You could also technically turn this into a variable as well. And then within that variable, you could then store that here. So we're going to go ahead and do here and plug that in and hit compile. Um, is undetermined, connect something to get data table for a specific type. Yeah, we haven't done anything yet. So you could do that. And after the get data table row, we would then want to break this struct. So you have to specify the struct if you're using a variable. Uh, this is a struct that I used for this as well. We have the name and the icon. Hit compile and you should see that error go away. So that is if you are using a, var a variable. If you're not using a variable, you shouldn't see that issue. So if we disconnect here, uh, and then do data table here, you should see that it's automatically here and you should see the break automatically available as such. I'm just going to plug that in just for um, consistency purposes. Consistency. And for my case, I want to make sure I'm only using four widgets. So under the array widget or a, array index, I'm going to say this is less or equal to uh, let's just say four and branch. And then return it. And then from here, we could just plug this in. I'll make it just slightly neater. I'm not going to make it super neat during this time, uh, but nonetheless, it's plugging directly in. And all that does is pass along the name into the get data table row that we also found over here. So we're just passing it along. Now from here, what we want to do is now we want to create this modular widget. So the thing that has the image and the text. So from here, we're gonna type in create widget. And now we get to select what widget we want to select. So we're gonna select that modular widget that we have here. And you'll notice that you see texture and name both appearing. So as such, you see them available. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into the variables and I'm going to move this on top. So it populates based on the order that this is listed here. Uh, so we're going to hit compile. Let's go back over here and let's hit that refresh nodes. So now it's on top. It kind of matches up a bit better. I just prefer that. Um, completely unnecessary if you don't want to. It's just neater. So from here, now that we've plugged in that information, after we have created this widget, we now need to specify where this widget goes. So usually when you're creating widgets, you're probably used to doing like add to viewport. However, in this case, we don't really want to do that. That's just gonna add it to our screen. What we want to do is we wanna add it into the container that we created. So this box we have on top. So we're gonna go over to our variables, grab container, and for vertical boxes, you could do add child and you have the add child to vertical box and then plug that in as such. So like that, we have it all plugging in and we're all good to go. So let's hit that compile button. In the designer, you'll notice that probably did way too much and that's because I used a vertical box and not a horizontal one. So that is on me actually. So let's go ahead and replace with horizontal box. There we go. Um, oop, get container is messed up. That's on me. Let's hit that variable button because I switched it and hit compile. And let's replace the add child. Oh, it still says vertical box. Refresh. Okay, there we go. 
add child to horizontal box. And we're going to plug that in and hit compile. We should no longer see errors. And like that, we easily populated five characters. So as you see, we have kind of an extra slot that we can enter there. So let's go back over here and let's just change this to five and hit compile. And like that, now we have all of these populated. So that's how you could kind of create a widget while also changing all of the information. I ended up using a data table just because it's uh, pretty easy. You can use like data assets or other means such as like an array that you may have information in, um, a struct that has information, things like that. But it ends up making it extremely is easy. So if I actually move this all over and move it over here, let's go ahead and move that down a little. Something else you could do when adding things into a horizontal box is you also have the option to set a line. Oh, if I can spell, you can set the vertical alignment as well as set horizontal alignment. And you can set it to either fill top or center. This is the same as selecting uh, to, to, to let's move this widget under the container. This is the same as adjusting these. So these are left, center, right, fill as such. So let's move that back out. Hit compile. There we go. So that's how you can populate information. That is essentially what a modular widget is. Like I said before, this can expand into many, many different things. However, just understanding the concept of this would make your life so much easier when creating a UI in general. Whenever you're creating any type of menu, if you feel like you're making the same thing over and over again, there may be an easier way to simplify your life the same way as if you would create a function. You create functions because you don't want to constantly repeat the same thing over and over again. If you find yourself using the same blueprints, you probably can use a function or a macro to really simplify your time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any recommendations on information that you don't know yet, or maybe you just don't fully grasp the concept, feel free to leave a comment, join the Discord, uh, join the Patreon, all the self-promo stuff. It's great having you watching my stuff and hope to hear from you guys again later. Have a great day.